Hey guys, in this video, I want to go ahead and talk about um, another example of projectile motion. In this video, we're going to talk about another example of projectile motion using Algebra 1. So we're going to go ahead and use our Algebra 1 to solve this projectile motion problem. Okay, so um, it says a projectile is launched atop a building and models the height given by h of t equals negative 16t squared plus 44t plus 12. Um, <coughs> and it says find the initial velocity of the projectile. Entonces tenemos un proyectil que tiene esta ecuación, aunque okay, está arriba de un edificio. Um, and then it, y tiene este modelo de la ecuación. Find the initial velocity of the projectile. Encuentra la velocidad inicial del, del proyectil. Y eso viene de acá. And that comes from right here, guys. 44. Now, usually the negative 16, that's your gravitational constant in feet per, per second. So the velocity, the initial velocity, la velocidad inicial va a ser 44 pies por segundo. It's going to be 44 feet per second. Uh, because your velocity is given by this one, which is v, v sub naught of t. Okay. Now, uh, part B, I kind of just screwed it up because it says it's on top of a building. So, it's not on the ground. Eh, la parte B, le pregunté si el proyectil está del piso. Y claro que no, porque en el comienzo yo dije que estaba a, arriba de un edificio. But the purpose for asking you that is to be able to analyze. You see this 12, ven este 12. This gives you the initial height. Este es la, la altura inicial. Entonces, es 12 pies del piso. So, this guy, the initial height is 12 feet from the ground. No, it's not on the ground. Okay. Okay. It's 12 feet above ground. And it makes sense because then that would make, it would give it a, it would make sense that it would be on top of, of a building. Entonces, este me da la velocidad, este me da la altura. Si no ven número aquí, if you don't see a number here, then automatically it's zero, which means it's being launched from the ground. Okay? And then, let's go ahead and find C. Find the maximum height of the projectile. Entonces, tenemos que encontrar la altura máxima. Now, remember, we talked about this earlier. Okay? Now, when you have a projectile, you do that it goes up and then it goes down. And the max height is right here. We call that the vertex. Okay, now one of the ways to find the vertex is this equation called x equals negative b over 2a. Un método de encontrar el vértice, la altura más alta, es usando esta fórmula. Now the reason I give you the formula is because, well, for one, your professors in college are going to expect you to know it. They're going to ask you, do you guys know the vertex formula? So it, it's just a fundamental thing to know for, for Algebra 1 classes. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use this one. Entonces vamos a usar esta. So remember, instead of x, we're using t. En vez de la x, vamos a hacer, usar t. Now, remember, a is the number in the front. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Negative b over 2 times a. Okay, so let me go ahead and give me my values. So right here, a, la a, is negativo 16. The b is 44. And the c is 12. Okay. So if I go ahead and... Substitute my values, negative b, negativo 44, and then 12 is, uh, I'm sorry, a is 16, negative 16, negativo 16. So now this is going to give me negative 44 over negative 32. Okay. And then let's go ahead and do 44 divided by 32. And that's going to give me 1.375. So, at t equals 1.375 seconds, it's going to reach the highest point. Entonces, el momento de 1.375 segundos, este proyectil va a llegar a la altura más alta. Well, how do you find it? Because, see, that's not the maximum high. Esa no es la altura, la altura máxima. I have to take this value. Tengo que agarrar este valor y lo tengo que meter aquí y aquí. Okay? So, this is the height, h, the height at 1.375 seconds, la altura de... La altura a uh, este tiempo me va a dar, so it's negative 16 times 1.375 squared plus 44 times 1.375 plus 12. Then I would just go ahead and put that all in my calculator. Entonces, nomás voy a poner todo eso en, en mi calculadora. So, 
Let's go ahead and do that. Negative 16. One point three seven five to the second power poder de dos and plus más cuarenta y cuatro one point three seven five and then plus twelve and that's gonna give me eso me va a dar cuarenta y dos punto veinticinco forty two point two five and that would be in feet okay va a ser pies now it's always negative sixteen so when you see that negative sixteen the value is always in feet but it also tell you Okay, all right, last problem. It says, how long before the, pro the projector hits the ground? ¿Cuánto tiempo dilata antes de que el proyectil uh, caiga al piso? So remember what we said when we're solving this, you want to set it equal to whatever they're asking you. So remember the ground is zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my height, whatever that is, equal to zero. Voy a agarrar la ecuación y lo voy a igualdar a cero porque it va a caer al piso. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Vamos a hacer esto. Negative 16t squared plus 44t, plus 12, más 12, igual a 0. So now what do I have to do? Ahora que tengo que hacer, now I have to factor it and solve. Tengo que factorizarlo y resolverlo. Now remember the first rule in factoring. Is there a common factor? Hay un factor en común. Claro que sí. Yes, there is. What is that factor? 4. El 4 le cabe a todos los 3. Okay. Entonces, también le voy a quitar el negativo. I'm also going to go ahead and take out that negative because I want to factor. And I don't like factoring out with negatives. So I'm going to take out that negative. Okay, you're going to get 4t squared uh, minus 11t. And then that gives you minus 3. Okay. And now I can factor this. Ahora puedo tratar de factorizar esto. Okay, so I'll do it the long way. Lo voy a hacer a método largo. Entonces, 4t por una t. 4t times 1t. Y aquí voy a usar menos 3 y positivo 1. Okay. Can you use 2 and 2? ¿Pueden usar 2 y 2? Sí se puede usar, pero van a ver que no les va a dar el resultado. You can use 2 and 2, but you're going to find out it's not going to give you that negative 11t. Okay. So here, if you notice, 4t times negative 3, that's going to give me negative 12t. t times 1 is positive 1. And when I combine that, that's going to give me the negative 11t that I wanted. Okay. So now, what do you do? These are my factors. So... Los factores son 4t más 1 y t menos 3. So now, you're going to set that equal to 0. Now, of course, the negative 4 is on the outside. El negativo 4 todavía está fuera, pero es un valor de, multiplica de multiplicación. No, no vas a, a cambiar la respuesta del tiempo. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and set it equal to 0. So 4t is going to equal to 1. And we divide by 4, t is equal to 1 fourth. Oops, sorry, negative 1 fourth, negativo 1 cuarto. Okay, and then on this side, we're going to do the same thing, t minus 3 is equal to 0, so t is going to equal to positive 3. Now, remember, we're talking about a real life scenario, so this is, there's no way there's going to be 1 fourth of a second. No puedo, podemos tener uh, un cuarto de un segundo negativo, porque en la vida real, el tiempo no es negativo. So the answer is, t equals 3. Okay. So that's how long it'll take for this projectile to hit the ground. So hopefully that helps. Espero que les haya ayudado. And just keep working hard, guys.